hardest part is figuring out what you want to master. Focus on your product. Can you tell somebody that they suck? You gotta just go for This is exactly what I want to do for a living. You can't even tell somebody that their breath is fit for life. Karen. Hi. Welcome to the pod. I'm excited to be here. I'm really... I'm really excited that you're here. Mm -hmm. I'm really happy that we finally made this happen. Yes. Been trying to make this happen for a long time, but we're both busy, busy people. Yes. We did a really cool panel together at ComplexCon. Yes. And um, so this was the only, it was only right that this was the next step. Yeah, I mean, we've been trying to put this together for a long time. Yeah. So it just, it, it made sense when I saw you at ComplexCon. I was yeah. like, I have to do this. Yeah, yeah, it's so good. And then yeah. I also, like a lot of times I ask my listeners who they want to hear and a lot of people always request you because I think that like you, not only are you an amazing person, uh -huh. but you, yeah. you're in, a lot of people know who you are because mm -hmm. you're in the, you know, you're in the mix. Anyone mm -hmm. who follows the hip hop industry, Beats by Dre, any of that stuff knows about you. And I think a lot of people um, want to know your story because they're inspired by what you're doing, mm -hmm. you know? So for me, um, do I give you the short version or the long? I want the, the long. long one. That's why it's short story <laughs> long. This is the long version. And, and here's another thing that I want to also mm -hmm. add as a disclaimer just for the listener is we know each other. We've known each other for probably like eight years or something. Yeah. Um, but I don't know your full story. Yeah. So I'm excited. So let's start at the very beginning. Where are you from? Where were you okay. born and raised? I was born in Brooklyn. Okay. Um, and my school going into the first grade my school, PS 181, had asbestos. Mm -hmm. So now they're trying to figure out where to put all the kids, and it wasn't enough room. Yeah. So they came up with the idea of Boys and Girl Scouts. Uh -huh. My mother, I came home excited. I'm like, I got a three and a half hour school day. <laughs> yeah. I'm home by 1230. She can fix me at lunch. Yep. I can take a nap, and this is going to be perfect. Yep. She said, absolutely not. Who's going to school for half a day? So... A week goes by. Me, I'm still excited. I was like, can't wait till school starts. We're going to be getting these little, you know, what they give you in Girl Scouts, yeah. Boy Scouts, those little badges. Yep, yep. You know, I see Beverly Hills troops. Um, <laughs> I thought it was going to be something along those lines. Yep. And I remember coming home and my mother was packing. And I was like, where are you going? She was like, where are we going? We're moving to Jersey. And I was like, whoa, 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 why? Because of that? Because of that. And she was like, I refuse to let my children um a lesson themselves by going to boys and girls scouts to get their education i was like it's not a bad thing like yeah. in my mind i'm trying to give her every reason not to shit on of course on you know the clubs and she's like no i'm not gonna have you and your brother mm -hmm. in the house doing school days i need y'all to go to school mm -hmm. so she ended up finding a house in elizabeth new jersey uh -huh. and me and my brother eventually end up moving there and that's why I like. Were you to, like pissed? Were you super pissed? I was super pissed because we had a, a wonderful brownstone in New York, and yeah. my cousins lived upstairs. So it's like all the family I knew was right there. Like mm -hmm. um, our neighbors were right next door who we played with. It was kids across the street. Yeah. So it was perfect for me. Like my life was was perfect. Yeah. And then here she go picking up like how they do in like the movies or cartoons. You see your parents pick up and move and yeah. you're like, oh, fucking great. <laughs> yeah. So me and my brother end up moving and the first year was definitely, I want to say the first two years was hard. Uh -huh. um, hard because it was like a new school, new. It was a new everything yeah. for me. And then I'm super introverted. Yeah. So my teachers took it as I couldn't talk. So it's bad enough I'm a Haitian American. And at that time, if you were Hispanic or Haitian, mm -hmm. they put you in these ESL classes. So if you were Haitian, you sat with all the other Haitian kids and they called it 303, uh -huh. which was their ESL class. And my mother tried to explain to them, she's like, listen, I understand she's Haitian, but she was born here, she speaks English. Yeah. Like they, they weren't, um, like they weren't comprehending and they were like, oh, well, you know, well, most Haitian kids, she'll feel comfortable here. My mother's like, it's not where you think she feels comfortable. It's where she belongs. Yeah. I don't care about her trying to fit in and you just putting her with other Haitian kids because you think that's where she belongs. Yeah. No, she speaks English. Mm -hmm. She writes English. Mm -hmm. She probably speaks and reads better than half the people in this class. Yeah. So she's going to a regular class. Yeah. It was to the it was like a fight before we even started. And I was telling her, I'm like, 
at this point, since it's such a struggle to get me in, I might as well just go back, go back to, to New York <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and be there. Yeah. Um, the first year was hard for my brother. He was so bad. They used to pin notes on his chest. Mm -hmm. But come to find out, my mom was never one to take labels that people would give us. Yeah. So even when she went to school for him, um, they were trying to explain to her, like, we think, you know, he has a problem. We're going to keep him back. My mother's like, first of all, you're not keeping my son back. He never used to act like this. There's a reason that yeah. he's lashing out. Let me figure it out. She ends up making him take like an aptitude test mm -hmm. and come to find out he was actually gifted and he was bored. Yeah. So he was lashing out. So here's my one, you know, coping mechanism that I have. The one person that I have in school is now going to a gifted and talented school yeah so for me I was like oh, okay a whole different school yeah he goes oh. to a, now he's going to a whole different school so yes. I'm like um okay ma well let me take the same test because I want to go to school with Mike <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and she was like no Karen now you guys have done everything me and my brother did everything together yeah. share the same friends we dressed alike you would have thought we were twins yeah so now she's like okay Karen now you need to separate yourself and you need to have a life outside of your brother which I didn't even really understand what that meant. Like first and second grade was super hard because yeah. um, the kids weren't nice to me. Mm -hmm. I didn't fit in with the black kids. I didn't fit in with the Haitian kids because they, they used to call me Yankee, which wow. is a terminology for anyone who was born in America. Got it. Um, if you think you're better than. Yeah. Um, so it was just really, it was really, really hard for me those first two years. But then after a while, just because of the love of my mom, my mom was actually my, she was my rock, my everything. Yeah. And she would continue to like just reassure me, like, Karen, listen, in this world, you're going to be different. You might as well get used to it. She put it in my head early on that you're different and yeah. you have to get used to being different, get used to standing out and all the things people would throw at me, like, you're weird, you're different, you know, you're this, you're that. My mother would use better terminology, like, you're unique, yeah, yeah. you know. Um, it's amazing how much of an special. impact that has, you know? Like, at that age, I think, like, being able to parent and like change the language a little bit to your kids is oh, so important. It's it's super real because yeah. if I would have let like the outside narratives control my destiny, yeah. even my mother's, the power of the tongue is very crucial. Mm -hmm. And it's just my mother, my father didn't say much. He just worked and provided. Yeah. Um, he was there, but he just wasn't that go-to person. My mother made sure she showed us love with her words and how she treated us and how we saw ourselves. She made sure, because at that time, you know, it wasn't acceptable to be of many different backgrounds yeah. and to be as open as people are now. It wasn't like that at all. Yeah. Everything was segregated and people chose to be segregated to a point where we'd have like racial wars. It'd be the Puerto Ricans against the blacks, really? the blacks against the Haitian. Fighting? But it was, yeah, it was by choice. By middle school, it's, it's, it's by choice. People are just having these fights to have these fights, but granted I had my mom at home who was basically my backbone who just reassured me like, okay, Karen, you are different. Yeah. I like to be at home and be on the computer. She'd be like, so what? Let yeah. me set her up with the whole system yeah. as opposed to everybody else who was going out, who was going to the clubs at the time. We'd go to St. Michael's um, and go to their parties. I would just be home yeah. and you know, people made fun of me for it, but my mother loved me for it. Yeah. And she loved me for everything that I was. And she understood, like, I love the internet and that's the space that I was in. And she pushed me towards it. It's yeah. just, you know, I, I have to give it up to my mom because, you know, she really was there for me when I needed her the most. Yeah. And that comes from when you're trying to figure yourself out yeah. and you're trying to identify with who you want to be as an individual. My mother made sure to make me recognize myself, yeah. how I see my value, my worth, and not letting you know society or people dictate my success or how I should see myself, the limits I should put on myself. Yeah. So it's just you know just my mom early early on just being there. But you know I grew up in Elizabeth, New Jersey, mm -hmm. which is most people know as far as Kia. <laughs> and, that's where it's based yeah that's yeah amazing. it's just like most people know us because we have ikea and mm -hmm. we're we're at newark airport mm -hmm. it's technically like in elizabeth well, too. so it's right by the airport yeah that area yeah it's Got right it. by the airport Got it. um so i grew up i grew up in elizabeth and elizabeth is a very interesting place because a lot of people stay and don't leave yeah and that's by choices we don't get to see the world we don't get to venture out so for yeah, me that's it was how ohio is too you know really this is that same mentality of like yeah. you you know you hopefully marry someone from your high school, 
get a job yeah. somewhere close by that your parents yeah. had planned. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. very like that. Regular, which is nothing wrong with it. But I just saw so much for myself outside of the community of, you know, what they tell you of, okay, you're going to leave here. You're going to go to college. You're going to have a baby. You're going to get married. Yeah. I was like, there's so many gaps in between there yeah. that I need to fill in with my purpose and with my life, with my love, with just everything in between, yep. just lessons, which are my mistakes. And that's why I decided to fill in. I decided to fill in those spaces. Yeah, um, that's huge. Were you always yeah. like, uh, you say that you were into computers and stuff early. Mm -hmm. Like, was that like started to draw you in at a super young age? Yeah, you have to understand, like I grew up with a pen pal. Mm -hmm. So I used to write somebody in China and mind you, I may get one letter a month or every other month. Did you like write? Was this before yeah. email? Yeah, this That's was amazing. like. And how did you, you find, how do you find a pen pal? Because our school set up pen pals oh, for us. And they were like, you pick somebody and they gave us a letter from different kids from across the world. Yeah. And we would share info with one another, but it would take so long to get a letter because yeah. it would go to the school. And I'm like, oh, this takes forever. And eventually here it comes, you know, the disc comes in the mail yeah, yeah. and now you're getting everything else with the AOL. And I said, this is great. Now I have things in common with people who are outside of my community yeah. and it doesn't care about the Internet didn't matter what I looked like. Yeah. So I had this appreciation at the time for Angie Martinez. Yeah. And she is somebody who I felt like embodied everything I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. Because here she was on the radio, and you're tuning in for her voice. Yeah. Not because of what she looked like, if she had the bag or the shoes <laughs> or the this. It's just because who she was as an individual. Yeah. So that right there is just like, that's what I wanted. I was like, I want to do something like that. And I was like, I don't know what exactly that is, but people lean and call on to her, yeah. and they trust her. Yeah. And I was like, I want to have my own refuge to that or just be my own version of that yeah. because and at the same time too she was wearing so many different hats yeah. because you know there was a point she was rapping yeah. you know she's in the movie she's acting she's 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 doing her show from three to seven yeah. so i'm like yo she can do it all yeah. why do i have to do one thing angie out here just checking each bucket <laughs> off yeah so That's so good so you knew that so young mm -hmm. like like in high school you were driven you were already thinking like that yeah, I was already thinking like that because I remember um, I started my first uh, Yahoo group mm -hmm. and it was for J.D. Williams, the actor. Yep. He played Bodie on The Wire. I don't know if you remember. I do, yeah, okay. of course. And, so, what, and what, um, what is a Yahoo group? So, <laughs> I don't remember. I should know this because I was, I'm in that era, but I don't remember what it so, is. So, it's basically Yahoo, like before we were all big on Gmail. Okay. Everyone had like their Yahoo account or okay. whatever the case may be. Yep. So they had groups on there. And you know, this is where I hosted my site on GeoCities as well. Yep. So they had like little fan groups and things you could create on there mm -hmm. for anything your heart desires. Um, same way we have Instagram and things now. Yeah. It's just I created a Yahoo group for JD Williams. And I remember over 600 people joined. And at the time, that's a lot. That's a that's a lot. Shit ton, yeah. And I was just like, "Oh, this is, this is crazy. This is dope." And then his lawyer reached out to me, and we he gave me his number and we exchanged info. And I remember, it was my birthday, and he took me to IHOP, and we had like this was my first time meeting him. How old were you? The whole nine. I think I was like, twenty one. Okay. Got yeah, it. I think I was like twenty one. Yeah. So I was like, this is my first time meeting him. This is super incredible. Look at the internet. And yeah. then fast forward a couple months later, I meet the Backstreet Boys. That's amazing. So, I saw that in your, I didn't know that, but I saw it in your info. So I was like, okay, the internet helped me meet J.D. Williams. Yeah. And they also helped me meet the Backstreet Boys. So the internet can actually give me what I want. But now it's figuring out what exactly do I want from the internet. Mm -hmm. How can I turn this hobby into a career? For sure. So that's where my blueprint started of, of like and then you have to you have to filter in of course the Miss Info mm -hmm. who at the time you know she was the only female hip hop blogger you know who didn't care about the salacious stories or yeah. anything else all she cared about it was just like getting out the info and the content and I was like I want to be my own version of Karen I want to you know create content that's in that same space um, and do the same thing and, 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 and that's what I end up doing it was just finding Finding an opening of what you think wasn't available or wasn't there yeah. and just, you know, 
making it work for you. Yeah, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. And what did you, for the Backstreet Boys, did you do this, a similar thing? Like you created like a fan? Thing? Yeah, I created, I created a fan site. I tried out for um, MTV Fanatic mm -hmm. and I didn't get picked, but um, Jive Records actually picked me for something else and I still got to meet them. Uh -huh. So MTV didn't pick me, uh -huh. but. Good job, MTV. You know. <laughs> I mean, the girl that they picked was cool too. She was like, uh, she was. I remember her. She was a super dope black girl. Yeah. So they like to like pair off the opposites. Yeah. So I got it. I think her story was more like she was more from like a super urban environment. Got so it. I get it. Um, were you a big Backstreet Boy fan? Oh yes. So you were like you were. Pumped. Yeah, I still am. Yeah. I still am. I just went to the concert <laughs> for my birthday last year. Yes, front row. That's so yeah. good. That just has to be such a dream come true. I can't imagine being like. Mm -hmm. 21 years old being a Backstreet Boy like 20 fan. years later yeah and figuring mm -hmm. out how to finesse like a fan thing and now all of a sudden mm -hmm. you're meeting them and like at that yeah. kind of an age that had to have a huge impact on you it it definitely did it just now going going back at it when I see um like Kevin remembers me and he's like yeah. hey I'm like oh my gosh all right, <laughs> high five high five yeah and um I end up doing some stuff with them um with Beats Yep. I gave them some product. Yep. So it was just, it's kind of cool to see it full circle go around. Yeah, yeah. A lot of the people that I grew up to and that I like secretly love being able to have a relationship or just foster some sort of business relationship or whatever, just still be in the same space yeah. is incredible within itself. Yeah, it's so cool. Yeah. Um, and then what, you went to college, right? Mm -hmm. What college did you go to and... What was your, you know, what did you go for? What was, what were you hoping to get out of it? Like what? So I went to college just to have the check it off the list for my parents. Got it. And because my brother went. So I went to Union County College and I studied liberal arts. Um, it was communications for yep. radio. Because yep. that was the only thing available. So when I just got enough, I got my associates. I was like, okay, I did what I had to do. They should be happy. And now, you know, God forbid, if something doesn't work out, I can always come back to school. Yep. That's what I told myself. Got it. Which is basically what I'm doing now. I'm taking courses at Harvard Business. So you are right so, now? So, yeah. That's amazing. So it's like I can come back. You yeah. can always come back. If it doesn't work, you can come back. And it's it's not, again, I didn't want to do things in the order that people told me I had to do it. Because yeah. life is just about reshuffling and making it your own game. For sure. Especially now. Especially yeah. with the internet. Yeah. You can, you know, there's so many people. I We talk a lot about college obviously in these conversations, like whether it's worth it or not. And obviously it's a huge conversation because it depends on what your dreams and goals are, right? Yeah. But I think the cool thing is with all of the content that you put out, that so many people put out, all these podcasts, like you can really get a good idea of what you want to do and find yeah. a lot of inspiration without it, you know? And it's pretty amazing. It is. And I will say that, you know, people who are in college now, it's definitely different from when I went because yeah. it wasn't PR. It wasn't marketing. They didn't offer you digital. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of things not offered to me when I was trying to find my career yep. or figure out my footing. But now a lot of these things are available. So I definitely tell people to take advantage of it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. What? Um, OK, so then you launched the you have these two fan pages, you're mm -hmm. meeting celebrities. You're, mm -hmm. Where do you take this? Like, when did you start to say, okay, this is what I'm gonna do with all this and try to start to make it a business? And um, I think when I got the internship with Funkmaster Flex, got it. I mean, it was great. You're getting tickets, you're getting to meet the celebrities, yeah. but it has to be something more tangible than that. It has to be like, everything was just surface-based. Yeah. Like, oh, it looks cool, yeah. but I really wasn't fulfilled in purpose. Um, so I'd go home and everybody'd be like, oh man, they love you. And everyone's like, oh, I heard you on the radio. Yeah. But I'm like, okay, how is this adding any value to me? What's yeah. changing in my life? So it was after leaving Flex, honestly, yeah. that I really got my footing and really was able to, to navigate and open up and just be in a better space. You know, Duke the God really gave me my first start, mm -hmm. you know, just, just, just over at Dipset and at Diplomats. He really was able to, um, he let us all grow, yep. you know, and it was Adrian, obviously um yams from 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 asap yeah like it was quite a few of us and he just like sean also like he he let us all grow and he didn't pigeonhole us like most companies were like listen i want you to be good and not great yep duke the god wanted you to be fucking phenomenal yeah 
And that's just who the person he was. He was like, listen, I want you to be, don't say you want to be me, be the better version of me. Like he sacrificed and he did everything possible just to make sure that our careers and where we were aligned to our purpose and things like that. Yeah. Like at times where you felt like you had no cheerleader, yeah. like he'd pick up those pom-poms, if you know what I mean, yeah, and just yeah, yeah. was would just lobby for you and just be your biggest supporter. Yeah. So it That's definitely so would have to be there. Yeah, yeah, so important. And what um, what was kind of the... Like your role there, like what were you brought in to do, in to do, and then where did you take it? It was it started out as like A and R admin, yep. and then it turned into everything. Yeah, like That's yeah, what it sounded like. yeah, it turned into <laughs> everything: marketing, do stuff on the road, putting content together, handling website, yeah. X Y Z. It was just all this stuff, but it was just my place to learn. Yep. So I just take it like that was my college. Mm -hmm. That was just my creating my blueprint and navigating the world of figuring out what's good, what's not, learning my lessons and things like that. For sure. And what part of it started to like attract you the most? Was it the marketing stuff and the the web stuff or like where did you start to? Because this is a good thing. I think it's so good to yeah. have a job like that where they let you have that freedom. Mm -hmm. But then it's, you know, it's kind of about looking at all the options and then you kind of find that one thing that you're like, oh, this could be my thing. So for me, it was when the mixtapes when they started producing the mixtapes yep. and putting them together and like feeling the papers like wow I helped put this together yeah. like wow I'm a part of something because at the end of the day we all want to belong we all we all want to belong we all want to be a part of something so the fact that I felt like I was part of this historic moment in hip-hop culture mm -hmm. where these guys were doing incredible things and I'm like damn I'm a part of this yeah. like my ideas are being heard this is happening and and that's where it was just like oh shit yeah this is work yeah, yeah. like okay now i'm getting it this is marketing this is branding yeah. these are these are you know this is digital things you're not even thinking about but these are all the names mm -hmm. that are that are um that i'm checking off that yeah. i'm doing but yeah. yeah i it was it was such a crazy experience yeah so cool and mm -hmm. then was it from there that you got the idea to start your own site or was that was that was there something in between it was while i was there and transitioning out i started my own site yep. because i just wanted something of my own mm -hmm. you know i wanted i was still trying to figure out names and whatever else and i i was going to do it with my with my friend and i end up keeping my name and i was like you know what i just everyone knows me as karen civil yep. they don't even say karen they just say both yeah so i was like at this point i'm gonna continue branding karen civil yeah. I said, so many people think it's not my name. Mm -hmm. And I, I just was gonna was, ask. Yeah, everyone thinks it's not my name. <laughs> yeah, it's just my too good of a name. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Karen Israel Civil, but That's my so mother good. made it short, which is Karen is civil, yeah. to be funny. But yeah, so That's good. it just it just made sense to me to like brand my name to continue going. And I did just that. But instead of going towards top tier artists, yeah. I went towards people who are on the come up. And my friend B dot, Brian Miller at Rap Radar. Yeah. He was so instrumental in me knowing new talent, mm -hmm. and he would put me on to things early. He put me on to J. Cole. He put me on to Mac Miller. Yeah. Like, he put me on to so many different people. He was like, yo, you got to check this out. Even with J. Cole, he was like, yeah, you know, he'd be in the barbershop. I said, okay, I don't hear barbershop <laughs> music. He was like, nah, it's fire, though. It's yeah, fire. Yeah. That's how I got into it. That's how I got into J. Yeah. Cole. So it's just, it's you know, people kind of plugging me into tune to what's happening and I made sure to showcase them early on yep. and be a voice for them because at the same time now when their fans are starting to grow and looking for content online, they would find my content. Yeah. They were like, oh, okay, Karen was with them at the beginning. She was there. Yeah, that's so cool. And was that yeah. your, like, was your main goal in the beginning to just highlight artists and is that what yeah. you did? You went and did interviews and stuff like that? or It was basically to highlight artists. Yep. My first interview was with J-Rock, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I'll never forget it. Um, when he was about to put out Pain in My Life with Lil Wayne, mm -hmm. and he was my first interview up at, at Atlantic. Mm -hmm. And from there, I had like, you remember the little flip cam cameras? Oh, yeah. I had a Hello Kitty one. I'm still. I still don't even understand why we had those when we had cell phones. But that was before. That was true. when our cell phone camera was so shitty, and those were like, oh, you can get HD video. Oh, true. This when we had the black Yeah, had it the was like right when Fantasy Factory started. We all had those little things, and we would just film videos like all night. It was so stupid. But I absolutely like 
I love that little camera. I bet. Especially and, for, a, you know, you have that content creator brain. Those that things like heaven. And I would like have it in my pocket and just pull it out. I'd be like, oh, let me get an interview yeah. real quick. <laughs> yeah. Let me get a so-and-so. And I would just be holding it. Yeah, you um, got to. And figured out my editing and things from there and just would post clips, would just keep, would just keep updating. Because I really got this idea from, it used to be this site called Fan Fam mm -hmm. at Rock Nation. Mm -hmm. They started this fan group for their up emerging talent where they would have fans come in, they would give feedback and things on the talent. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is really dope. I want to create something like this, but I'm gonna just call it KarenCivil.com. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, this way people could give feedback, they could tell me who I should feature and do interviews with. So it really started for me taking an idea from FamFam Fam, cause I went up there one day and they had like, they had us listen to all this Memphis Bleak stuff. Yep. And I was like, oh, this is really dope. You get to be a part of this. And I love that feeling of being a part of it, knowing about the record who's featured on it, who's on this, who's on that. So I was like, that's how I want my audience to read my site. Yeah. Like, you know, you can go get the gossip and the everything elsewhere. That's fine. We still give you updates when it's necessary. Yeah. But there are so many other people who do it so good and they've yeah. been around so much longer. I yeah. was like, this is my niche. This is where I belong. So, so it was true. just, it was finding that, that open space. Yeah. Um, and yeah. making it my lane. That's so good. Plus, yeah. I just think you don't want, I don't know, for me it was never appealing to, even like when I do these interviews, I always tell people like, I'm never gonna ask about like the gossipy shit. You know yeah. what I mean? Because I just don't want to build any sort of life around having to track down the hottest new rumor. Yeah. You know, I'd much rather be a part of like telling good stories and building up Great young artists and stuff. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> I don't, it just seems like it, that stuff seems like it'd be fun maybe not for me, but for someone for a couple years. And yeah. then it's just like, I don't know, you're getting older and your whole life is dedicated to like gossip. It just doesn't yeah. seem fun. Well, yeah, it, it definitely, it gets time consuming and people take things personal and you gotta go outside yeah, and yeah. the energy and all of that. It's so it's not good. No. So um, yeah, it didn't work. I mean, that just, did, that wasn't my lane, but I knew LA eventually was calling. I don't know if you even remember my first time in LA, I went to the Fantasy Factory. Really? It was my first time. I came here. I had a photo shoot for Young and Reckless. Was that the first time we ever met? Yes. This was the first time we ever met. <sighs> wow. This was years ago, and I toured the whole factory. Yeah. And I ended up doing a photo shoot for you guys. Yeah. But this was my first time. That's crazy. Like, first time so in like LA. So, we're a part of your, like, memory of moving mm -hmm. to LA. I came out here, I was like, oh, wow, this is nice. So I was like, but I came by myself as an adult. Yeah. I was like, this is well, my friend Sable too. I was like, oh, this is really, really nice. This, so I still have those pictures to this day. We toured the whole. I have them too, actually. I just couldn't remember whether that was the first time or I remembered having like a meeting with you, with Kevin Delaney at, in New York at like a coffee shop or something. And I don't remember what we were talking about or what it was really about, but that had to be probably shortly after. Yeah, this was after, because Kevin had me come That's to funny. like, I was like, Kevin, where is the factory? I remember I had to look up the yellow pages for yeah. a cab. Yeah, yeah. that's good. <laughs> so yeah. did you move to LA like because you saw that it was, like you just saw there was more action, more avail availability I mean, for content or like? The fact that, as soon as I got to LA, it was just different. Yep. I got to LA, um, I'm in a studio with Wayne. This is when, you know, Wayne and Mac, and they're recording, like he's recording his album and mm -hmm. stuff he got going on. He's in a good space. Yep. And then Kevin hits me like, hey, if you wanna come out of the factory, I'm like, what? Yeah. The one from TV? Yep. And then you get a whole personal tour. Yeah. And it was just like, everyone was, you guys were so freaking nice. Usually it's like you get a Thank tour, you. no one's there. Yeah. Like it's like, no, shh. We give you the full show. Yeah, lights off, shh. Yeah, yeah. No uh -huh. talking, no talking. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like this, took my picture everywhere, went to the little ball pit. Yep. Like it just was, it was so much fun. And that's just when I was like, I got to figure out how to come back out here. Yeah. You don't get that in New York. You don't because I feel like people are less uh, guarded yep. and they're more comfortable. I mean, my I remember my first time in the mall, I saw David Beckham yep. shopping for Victoria Beckham yeah. and he was with his son and I just was like, what is happening yeah, right now? I was LA. like, what is happening? Yep. And, like, and it was like the lady who was behind the counter, I was just like, do you see what's happening right here? Do you see what's happening? It, huh? And she was just like, 
looking at me like, why are you looking at me like that? I said, yeah. mind you, I'm not trying to be like, oh my God. <laughs> but it just was so crazy. Yep. And she was like, oh, wait, was that David Beckham? I said, okay, I know I'm not bugging. I thought I was bugging. I was like, I know I'm not bugging. But those moments yeah. where it's just like, he, he probably doesn't remember this, but I do. Because I was like, I thought the the cashier lady was behind me. And I was like, which one should I do? And he was like, you should go with this one. And I turned around like, that's how I noticed David it was him. David said it? Yeah. He was like, you should go with this one to the staff. Like, yeah, you know. You know. David, David helped this me, out. David helped me pick this out. You, you know, know one of the first player, names. Whatever he is, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, first name basis. He was shopping for the <laughs> wife. He stopped to help me real quick. <laughs> <So good. laughs> and still kept it to this day, just because, yeah. you know. Of course. You got to use that story. Yeah, David, you know, he told me this was this was a look. He's a good guy, David. You know, great mm -hmm. fashion sense. But that that experience just in L.A., just I was just like, I have to come out here yeah. because people are just, just open. You can get lost very quickly. Yep. But you can find yourself even quicker. Yeah. And I just like the person that it turned me into where I'm riding a bicycle, I'm surfing, mm -hmm. like. You surf? Yes. Man, I wanna learn how to surf so bad. So I go to surf school, you should, guy over here is looking, I feel like you surf? He surfs, yeah, he's oh, trying okay. to get me to go surf. No, you should, so. You go to surf school? So yes, the reason why though, it's like it teaches you to control chaos. Yeah, I need that. Yeah, which is a great thing because you have to do so much in a small amount of time yeah. where it's like you can't panic. Yeah, so that's why yeah. I like love it. Because it's scary. Like I, just even little waves. I mean, uh, you think about the jellyfish, the shit in the water. Yeah. And like a three foot wave feels like it's like a mountain when it falls on you. you uh, know? It's not that bad. Okay, listen, Karen, <laughs> I get it. You're an L.A. girl now. You're a surfer. It's, it's, it's not that. It's, it's not that bad. Once the first wave like hits you, like... Okay, 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 I yeah. didn't die. So you're more concerned about like the weird beasts under the water. Yeah, when you go in and it's like when my instructor has his shoes on, I'm like, bro, I don't have on shoes. What are we doing? <laughs> yeah. like, he's like, no, 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 it's fine. Remember, if you feel anything, we have seven minutes to get to the, get to the, um, seven? what is it? Yeah, uh, the lifeguard to, station? to the, get to the lifeguard station, you know, for the jellyfish. Seven minutes is a long time. And I'm like, you okay. A jellyfish on your back. Okay, <laughs> or like on your foot or something. Mm -hmm. And he's like, you know, if something stings you, we got to, you know, the peel, take it off. I said, what? Stop telling me all of this. <laughs> but <laughs> other Man, than that. You are so L.A. I didn't realize you were out here like surfing and stuff. Yeah, you, but you, you find yourself doing the most random things. I went to this wolf, um, like. Sanctuary? Yeah, sanctuary. That was really cool. Where's that at? Um. This is the thing. I don't really know names, but I'm going to send it to you. Just like, inland I just, somewhere probably, right? Yeah, it's like far like in the mountains. Yeah. But it was it was super nice. They have them in different sanctuaries and you go in and you just, you have to relax. They're not going to attack you, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I'm still <laughs> Why'd here. Why did you do that? Was it a photo shoot or something? No, I just, I wanted to try it out. I definitely took pictures. Yeah, of course. Um, I just wanted to try it out. I find myself like just being more open to trying things here. Yeah. So it's like, you know, even having having a bicycle yep. and just, you know, with the surf stuff and people are like, hey, do you want to try this? I'm like, sure, let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. As opposed to New York, it's like, uh, Jersey. I'm like, oh, you'd never catch me riding a bike. Yeah, no chance. Yeah. It's too like, sketchy. And New York just feels like, I mm -hmm. like New York in small doses, but it feels so much more like tight. You know, like just uptight and kind of like yeah, you just you, go you where just you're go, going. You get, the, you get the job done. Keep your head down and like get to the office. And we would always go to um, the shore and I never like, what's crazy is I never got in the water. Uh -huh. You just went on the pier yeah. and like that was it. Mm -hmm. I was like, damn, I never really went in the water, never did any of that activities. It took me coming here to like yeah. really open up and, and just changed how I saw things. Because I feel like New York is such a concrete jungle. Yeah. Because the air is different, obviously. Yeah. You know, it's the train, the mass transit, and everything else in your way. We're here. You know, we have the trees and the water. Yeah. And, and it's it's definitely more open. It's so much better. I mean, the point mm -hmm. of the, 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 the moral of the story is L.A. wins. Yeah, I don't want to listen. I'm not. I, I love my roots. I love Jersey. But I'm saying, here got me surfing and, and drinking <laughs> celery juice in the morning. Yeah, I, I definitely wasn't New doing that. Sucks. Before we started, <laughs> I definitely wasn't doing that in um, in New York. I wasn't drinking any celery, nothing. We'd be at no. our crown fried chicken. Yeah, it just was just chugging coffee and yeah, just very regular. Yeah. So then, what mm -hmm. what did you 
Was there a moment or mm -hmm. a time period when the site started really cracking? Because I know like when you're mm -hmm. in that business, like mm -hmm. at first you're fighting for anyone to just give you yeah. a moment. And then at a certain point it starts to switch where now all of a sudden people are asking to be featured on yeah. the site. And what, you know, do you remember like when it really hit its stride? Um, I remember Joey IE was one of my biggest supporters and still is to this day. Mm -hmm. I love him. He would get me interviews with everybody who came up at Asylum. Like this one, he had Bootsy, he had Waka Flocka. Mm -hmm. He would make sure they scheduled me out. And I was like, this is when I first was starting the site. And he would schedule me out to make sure that I got my interviews and things first. And he catered to me just like I was a double XL or Source Magazine or whatever else. So I had to give it, I have to give it up to Joey because he really held me down. Yeah like in those times. Um, he still does, but just in those starting times, it's super crucial. Yeah. Cause you're like, I need support, I need support. Yeah, you need and he's like, okay, get. here's the support. What, you can't use this as a reason not to do <laughs> yeah. or excel. So it's like, he really made me step it up. Yep. Um, and you saw it, like you, that's the time when you saw it start to pay off from yeah, getting I, all those. I saw it there. And then when I started to put out news, I remember when Waka Flocka got shot. Mm -hmm. So at the car wash, my friend happened to be across the street and was on the phone with me and they were talking to me. They were like, yo, Walker just got shot. I said, what? Uh -huh. I'm sitting at the yeah. computer. I'm like, this is, I gotta tell breaking what's happening, news, yeah. breaking news. And I got so much traffic from it. Mm -hmm. Like so much traffic to the point. Cause you were point, first on it, yeah? Yeah, I was first on it yeah. to the point of, I think he got like shot or robbed or something happened. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know the full particulars. I don't remember the full particulars. But the person then reached out and was like, hey, I want to let you know my side of the story. I said. The guy who robbed him? Yeah, I guess. You know, he <laughs> oh sent God. me pictures of like the chain and, and like a watch or something. He tried to say it was his allegedly. Yeah. And I was like, mm, I'm not going to give you my platform. No. But I am going to post your picture <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in this watermark uh -huh. in the story and keep it moving. Yeah. Was that bad journalism or whatever else? I was like, I'm not giving you a platform to talk about this man. Yeah. But I will say, you know, this person reached out and said he was so-and-so and let my readers decide. Yeah. But then I started having the most just random, you know, people reach out like, yo, I, I want to tell you my story or this happened or X, Y, Z. And I was like, oh, this is this is really, really dope. Well, now when you're getting big sites like MTV, XXL, now yeah. they're like they're sourcing you. Yeah. You're like, oh, shit. Yeah. But when you get like the new music cartel sourcing you yeah. and you can beat them. That was where my mind was. I was like, I love these guys, but I want to beat them. Yeah, I don't know why. I was like, I'm not in y'all crew. Of course. I was just like window shopping, but window shopping to a sense of I was broke and couldn't be a part of them. Yeah. Like they wouldn't let me hang with the cool kids. So <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh. Yeah, that's always who you put the target on. Yeah, you know? I was like, oh, damn it. Yeah. So I just made it my goal. I was like, if I saw them talking about a record, I'd be like, yo, I gotta release this first. I'd be like, yo, I'd hit the artist, like, yo, your record, your record's about to leak anyway. You might as well just give it to me. Yeah. Da -da -da, because I had it in my mind, which I'm glad I stopped. I was so pent on beating them and it wasn't even a competition. Yeah. You know, eventually some of them are my greatest friends now. Yeah, They're yeah, like, yeah. Karen, it was never competition with us. Like yeah. we just enjoyed every moment. For and sure. I wish on hindsight, looking back at it, I wish I would have enjoyed every moment like yeah. that too and not made it so like competition-y <laughs> yeah that's the interesting thing though is like i what i question myself a lot is like mm -hmm. i don't ever want to work out of negativity but yeah. like some of my greatest accomplishments have been fueled by wanting to prove people wrong or yeah. wanting to beat competition or you know what i mean mm -hmm. and so it's like i try to find a way now to not work with any of that in my mind but i wonder if that's like a fuel that you need that's you know? a fuel people say that they need but that's not the fuel that i want in my body yeah. i don't want to in i don't want to inhale negative people's negative connotations yeah. or intentions that they see for me um i now am in a place where i have to be content with the race that i'm driving yeah. um being content in my lane and doing what i'm doing and not focusing on what's happening to my left or my right they're still going to progress and like J. Cole said this the other day, what's for me will never miss me and what misses me was never for me. Yeah. So that's literally what I tell myself. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. It's something I definitely try to practice because I don't think, Yeah. I don't think it's good. Like you don't want to work from that place. Um, what, was Beats the next thing? 
Yeah, Beats, uh, shout out to Omar. I was like their 11th or 12th employee. Oh, really? Yes, I started when it was like, Beats look like this. Really? <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, like we were in the Interscope office yeah. on the Def Jam floor. Yeah. Uh, we were two offices, a conference room, and two, yeah, two tables, like those tables right That's there, amazing. and there was two of us sitting there. We had two of those right behind each other. That's good news for our podcast room. That might mean that we could be the next, you know I mean? could be the next yep. big thing. Could be the next, you could, you could be the next Beats by Jam For here. sure. And my other que my question mm -hmm. quickly before you get into that story is like, why did, uh, like when that time came, did they, they obviously came to you because you've now built this massive site, you have mm -hmm. this huge reputation. What made you decide it was the right time to leave what you had built and do that? Or did you sell it? I don't it, or necessarily do? think, I, I didn't have to leave, but... The fact that this company, when I spoke to Omar, mm -hmm. right, because um, I came here for All Star Weekend, mm -hmm. and they were have they had a gifting suite, and I was able to go up and make custom headphones. But what I did was I didn't care about myself. Yep. I said I want to make custom headphones for Lil Wayne, and they said for real. I said yep, I want to make one for J Cole too, and they're like, oh, you know them? I said yes. Uh -huh. They would appreciate these headphones more than I would. Yep. So they were like, okay, cool. So they made the headphones and they gave me all this product. Now the product you would give to your friends and your family. I didn't do that. I knew when I had interviews and things coming up, yep. these at the time, these are price points so high and yep. people are just now like, oh shit, you getting those beats? Yeah. Those, there's conversation mustering around them. So what I did is I was just like, I would give them to people. Like I'd give them to talent or whoever I was interviewing, like, hey, this is for you. And they're like, damn, for real? You giving it up like this, Sybil? I'm like, yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, you can have these. Yeah. You know, I just bought these, just picked these up real quick for you. Yeah. And they would be so happy by it that they would send me pictures. They'd yep. be like, yo, in the studio with my headphones, good looking, Siv. And Got I was like, that. oh, product placement. There you go. That's a whole nother, yeah. So I created this one sheet and I sent it over to Omar. It was all the pictures of people sent me and that, you know, that I found as well too of just if I went to the studio, I just happened to take a picture. Mm -hmm. All the pictures I said, listen, um, these are all the people that I've got within the last month in headphones. I went to your social media. I said in the most politest way I could. Yeah. It just was not hitting. Yeah, it just yeah. was not great. And I was like, you know, it feels like your your social media is lackluster. Mm -hmm. So here's some content to help you drive conversation. Yeah. And then I sent it to Jessica, um, who was like a marketing coordinator, I think. Yep. And then she forwarded it to Omar, and Omar, who was the marketing president president of marketing, reached out to me. He called me on my mm -hmm. Google phone, mm -hmm. and he was like, "Cause that's the number I put on my business card." Yep. So he called me. He was like, "Hey." Well, you get all these pictures from? I said, I took them or artists gave them to me. He was like, yeah, but how? I said, mm, not sure what you mean, how? <laughs> he was like, you working with an agency? I was like, no, these are just my pictures. You can use them. I said, but credit to me, but I'd love for us to figure out a way. It's obviously you don't have somebody in the field yeah. out creating content for you. I'd love to figure out a way for us to, you know, merge our synergies yeah. and bring it all home where we both win. And he was just like, yeah, I've never heard anyone say that. I said, well, I'm Karen Civil, and it's a first for everything. <laughs> yeah. And he was just like, okay. <laughs> she sounds kind of like a car salesman at the same time. It's very, like, it threw him off because I was just so confident in yep. how I said it. Yep. And I was smiling when I said it, too, because I was like, I knew my, like, when you know your work is good yep. and what you produce and your idea is really good, I get excited yep. to a point, like, on some Jerry Maguire, like, oh, yeah, not even yeah, yeah. show me the money, but more of like, show me the results. Yeah. So, so after that, he was just like, how much? Yeah. How much to get you to LA? How much to get you over here to be a part of this? I was like, I still wanna have my life. I still wanna have my website. I still wanna do certain things. Mm -hmm. And he understood that and it worked out and it worked out. I had this incredible friend, Vanessa Anderson, mm -hmm. who shout out to her. She, I was like, I don't know where I'm gonna move. She said, okay. I was like, yeah, I was thinking I'll just get like a hotel. I figured, you know, I'm gonna wing it when I get there. I'm yeah. gonna figure it out. Cause I'm trying, she was like, well, I do have a house. I was like, okay, huh. okay, this is cool. Yeah, This is cool. It worked out and I was slept on her couch for a bit. And then she had a spare bedroom. And then I stayed with her for about for the first year because yeah. I was trying to figure out if I was gonna stay, if I was gonna go back. I was still figuring myself out. Yep. 
I wasn't trying to make, when people come here, they're telling you you gotta make the big purchase, yep. the car, the house, the course, this. I wasn't yep. investing all that money up front if I didn't know what the longevity of me being here was. So I was like, let me get past this first year into two and we'll see how it goes from there. Got it. So after that first year, I struggled with just life and yeah. everything in general. Yeah. Just, I struggled because I was so homesick. Mm -hmm. And they say it's it's easier to transition into L.A. when you know people yeah. and you already have your core group. Oh, for sure. As opposed to learning new people, because as you're learning people, people are like don't hang with them, don't hang with them. Uh, they're sketch, oh, so they're this, hard. they're yeah. that. And you're like, what the fuck? I yeah. just want to go yeah. hiking. Yeah. I just want <laughs> to go. Wanna be, yeah, I just want to do <laughs> shit. Yeah. And it's like you have to think, you know, make sure this is not using you for that or for this or for that. Yeah. And, and I'm already paranoid and an introvert yeah. so that only made that only heightened my insecurities of even course. more yeah. and it made me more standoffish where yeah. that first year was a struggle yeah. a struggle i'm gonna really say the first two years was a struggle yeah me too you really two years so? it took two years yeah okay you know it was because when i would go home for christmas i I'd go home every year for christmas and mm -hmm. i would go home and it would feel like home back in ohio after yeah. two years i was like okay la feels like home like it feels yeah. like i'm leaving home to go to ohio yeah but it took probably two years. It takes so long. It's it such takes, its own world. It takes time to adjust. Mm -hmm. And once I got to that feeling of like, okay, when I go back to the East Coast, I'm like, I remember one day I was like, I want to go home. And everybody looked at me like, what? Yeah. It's like, you've been in LA for two years? And I was like, <laughs> nah, I'm ready to go home. Yep. I was like, get me. I think it was like raining that day too. Mm -hmm. I was like, what is this? Mm -hmm. I was like, get me out of here. 100%. I don't even own a coat like that to be dealing <laughs> yeah. with this. It's so true. Yeah. That's so cool. So you were able to, the Beats thing, you were able to just stack on top of what you were already doing. Yeah. And, and it worked so well because my life, my everyday life and my being a blogger and everything I had to do, it helped me with my Beats career yeah. and things that I was doing because I was able to do these projects and do these things that were just like incredible within itself and it's all because i had these relationships with artists anyway yep. and they just fit right in and it was again figuring out those synergies to make it work and everything was just talking to each other yep. like all the companies i was working with all the things that i was building everyone was talking to each other and it just worked yeah that's so cool yeah and then the way i, I might butcher this right because mm -hmm. i'm gonna give you mm -hmm my understanding like the way that i look at what you do mm -hmm. is you do like literally a little bit of everything you mm -hmm. we're talking about being on tour and stuff like that with yg i mm -hmm. know that you create brand partnerships with artists and stuff mm -hmm. like that massive things like that i know that you've done things like helping you helped little wayne with mm -hmm. a letter yeah website we, from wheezy thanks you or, yeah yeah so you figured that out mm -hmm. so i just as far as the way that i look at you is mm -hmm. you just have incredible relationships with artists you have incredible relationships with with brands and you're really really good at figuring out how to create yeah. things and opportunity is that at all accurate yes it is okay. so it's pretty much um strategic branding and marketing mm -hmm. is what i do it's as um what was it new york no that was la weekly i forget which new york new york magazine i forget which one was basically titled me the girl that just makes people cool yeah and i like i like that title yeah because now um i'm at a place where it's not just regular companies it's high-end companies too mm -hmm. creating synergies and creating moments in culture with entertainers it could be myself yeah. and just things like that be in spaces you probably would never even think about yeah like I, it, it's fine where they're like, oh, okay, I see you doing, which is nothing wrong with. I see you doing the Ciroc thing. They're like, okay, that's a given. Yeah. That's Diddy. Of course, he's gonna come to us. Yeah. But when you see Christian Louboutin and you see Louis Vuitton, they're like, oh shit, you over there too? I'm like, yes. Yeah. They they know what our dollar means to them. Yeah. They knows what they know what the Millennium Dollar is. They yeah. know that we have it to spend, yeah. and we move the culture. So just being an influencer in that sense. But yes, you. You got it. Right? I mean, yeah. I'm trying, I don't, I didn't, I want to make sure that I said it in a way that didn't sound like I was discounting because I have an no, no, insane no. amount of respect for what you do. No, it's, I, it's I, definitely that. Yeah, I yeah. just know that you pull off a lot of random shit. And so I'm like trying to, because I know you work with those big brands and mm -hmm. I know that you also have built your personal brand mm -hmm. insanely big and you've written a book and all mm -hmm. this, you know, like you, it's a lot of stuff. It's, it's, that's why I just go with at this point CEO, media maven, because there's, 
Karen Civil, who is the entrepreneur, philanthropist, um, an influencer. Mm -hmm. Then there's Always Civil, which is my strategic marketing and branding company, which a lot of the people I work for and companies are under. And then there's my philanthropy end, which is all the school stuff, which is um, Live Civil, which is all about um, pushing um, education for young millennials and pushing the power of play in in urban environments. Got it. Yeah. And did you, is it also safe to say that like, this was all a natural, once again, the way that I see it, Mm -hmm. having known you for a while, is Mm -hmm. like, you started doing the Beats thing, you built all these incredible relationships, then you started working with another brand, then you Mm -hmm. started working with this artist, and you just really, it seems like you really have just pieced these relationships and this knowledge of how to partner brands and artists and this sort of thing over the years. Yeah, it's it's definitely taken me some time, mm-hmm. and um, it's it through the years I've I've figured it out, which now created this domino effect where it's just like now it all kind of makes sense. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, it was just it it was just making the conversation that I was having here with this company. If there's an artist or brand or myself, just figuring out a way how to to bring it all over here, yeah. so it's just in, in in one pot. Whether it made sense to the to the average consumer it wasn't about that it was it was about making creating moments and culture that you talked about online and offline because yeah. a lot of what i do starts online but then you take it off like oh yo did you see there's so many different moments um little wayne when he did the million dollar headphone at yeah. all-star weekend yeah. you know when wayne accepted his mtv award with he debuted his headphones. Yeah, that was our commercial right there. Yeah. So it was all these moments in culture. They're like, "Yo, Karen, that's hard. Yeah. That's crazy." And I'm like, "All these moments in culture are happening. They start online, and the conversation goes offline. Yeah. That's really what I'm there to create and do." How cool! What a fun. Yeah. Do you, would you describe your life as incredibly fun? I would definitely. Um, I would call it fun at the same time. It's a lot. Yeah, it's it it's, it's like a lot. Because it. at, at times where it's just, I just went through this uh, phase a couple months ago. So I had to have surgery and I was down for a couple weeks and months. Yeah. And that's when I just realized how many people depend on you. Yeah. How many people are counting on you. And when I got sick, people were like, whoa. They weren't like, feel better. They're like, you get sick? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, Can yes. you hurry up and take care yeah. of that? Yeah, they're like, oh, wow. So you sick i'm like yes the same way you (laughs) cough and i get sick too so it was just it was interesting to see people humanize me i'm like i am human and go through those for so long i feel like so many people have counted on you yes so long because you're also the type of person i know this that like you can call at any yes. time of the day or night and say hey karen what do you think yeah. about blah 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 and you'll be there with ready to go you know and that's always going to continuously be me i never let um Uh, any shortcomings or things I may be going through stop me and that's why I just feel like just just the people who are watching me like man she continues to stay upbeat and I don't pretend everything is fine I tell people now like listen man I'm in therapy um I go through the motions but the fact that I have somebody I can talk to about it I can still get up every day love what I do love myself even more process uh process hurt you know, figure out what grieving is and just go through process, just just go through the motions yeah. of, of what we call this life, uh, I wouldn't change it. Yeah. I wouldn't change not one thing. Yeah. yeah, That's one thing, too, that I've observed about you is, like, when we first met, you were incredibly introverted, mm-hmm. right? Like, you barely spoke. Yeah. And now you're, like, you look like a superstar. <laughs> you're, like, you're... Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm out here. You talk I'm, really, like you yeah. have this energy when you talk, like, you know, you've kind of owned this, like, you're a star now. Yeah. What was there, is there any things in particular, anything more than the next that helped you kind of develop that confidence and that, you know? Um, I'm just, it's it's about me being comfortable with myself. Mm-hmm. It's not no one said time, no, no one said anything. You know, my mother was my reassurance, but if I didn't have it inside for myself, it yeah. didn't matter what she thought. Yeah. So I had to start looking within myself. I am still that introverted person, but it comes out when it needs be. Mm-hmm. I do understand, though, Karen, you can't have this big-ass personality and then walk into a room and be quiet. People are like, 
what's happening with her? What yeah. is this? Like, why she got an attitude? I'm like, no, it's no attitude. I'm just introverted right yeah. now. Yeah. So now I kind of step out of it when I know I'm going out and I'm going to, it's just, yeah. you're getting Karen. Hey, yeah. how you doing? Yeah, you I'm, do it well. I'm, I'm happy to be here. And the fact that, you know, you, when you really boil down, when it really boils down to certain things, just really look at your life. Yeah. Like really look at the things you may be upset about. You say you list on this side, yeah. but you wake up every day, you, you like, Everyone doesn't have this opportunity. Yeah. Everyone doesn't have your opportunity. And that's what I continuously tell myself, like, Karen, man, you get paid to be yourself. Mm -hmm. All the things that you said you wanted to do in high school and in college and people counted you out, you're doing them now. Yeah. And it's not even just about tangible material things. It's just about being in my purpose, doing certain things from the school in Haiti to the event at the Barclays. It's just all these things mean something to me. Yeah. So that right there, just that is my oh shit. Yeah, yeah. Like, you remind yourself of that every morning. Yeah, I tell myself I have post its all around my place, yeah. and I have an erasable um, marker. I write in the mirror. It's just like, what are you, what are you thankful for? Did you smile today? Yeah. And what's the blessing? So I have to answer those questions before I leave the bathroom. Yeah, that's so good. It's yeah. it's funny to me, like. Because I'm relatively introverted, too, and I think mm -hmm. for me, I went through a phase starting like a few years ago where I just started even learning that there were like tools and stuff like that to help you. You know yeah. what I mean? Like just gratitude practices and little things, yeah. you know, that I think is so important. And I wish that was I wish it was taught in school. I wish we learned it young. It's unfortunate because they didn't teach you about being introverted. Yep. They just called you different and yep. weird and. You know why are you acting like you you're in you're in special ed and they yeah. said everything all these negative connotations yeah, and yeah. now we're in a place where I feel like schools and things are talking about it now with kids. Hopefully they I are. Hope so it seems I can't tell. It's what I'm doing though, like with my niece, I talk to her in the same way my mom used to talk to me. Yep. So I don't go, oh my God, you're beautiful, because I know the world is going to tell her that. Mm -hmm. They're going to tell her like, oh my, you're you're this you're that you you fit the columns of like a mixed race baby or whatever the yeah. fuck people think that is i was like you're already gonna have that little fandomonium yeah. but i want you to know like you know you're educated you're mm -hmm. smart like the inner you needs to be as beautiful as the outer you yeah. yeah yeah so important and then do you ever also like is there ever times when you're like look i can't be extroverted karen today like mm -hmm. i need to just lay in bed and watch netflix Mm -hmm. Whole month of December. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Whole month of December. Okay. People is just like, what's up? I'm like, I have nothing to give. Mm -hmm. I, I remember I had to go to an award ceremony and I did not want to leave my house, but they were really like, but I confirmed. Yep. And Ashley, who works with me, was like, Karen, but you got to go. I was like, Ash, I don't want to. Don't have to. Yep. Don't want to go. Yep. She's like, Karen, just please go. It's just the one time I'm asking, you know, I know it's a lot, but I've been in my room for days just sitting in the dark. My friend Wanda came to visit me and she was just like, um, are you OK? I said, Wanda, I told you before you came, I gave you the whole contention before you came that I am going to be home sitting in the dark because yep. I'm going through something. Let me figure out what I'm going through. I don't want to talk about it. I'm not in the place of therapy yet. Let me just figure it out. Mm -hmm. So. I remember that day going out and I was like in tears on stage accepting the award. And then I ended up breaking it. I dropped it right <laughs> in there. Course. I was just like, of course. Ashley was looking at me like, you couldn't hold the thing for 10 seconds. I was like, Ashley, um, and this is the first time people have seen me outside. Yeah. And I was just like, I, I was like, Ashley, I couldn't hold it together. Yeah. And I was like, and this is why I told you, and this is what I realized. I was like, Ashley, I don't feel like pretending I'm fine. Yeah. And I think that's something that we do a lot is we lie to ourselves and we pretend that everything is okay. Yeah. I said, Ashley, I'm not okay. I said, the fact that I'm telling this to all my friends and everyone keeps telling me, oh, you'll be fine, you're blessed. I'm like, it's not about that. I'm not counting or taking away from my blessings. Yeah. I'm just telling you in this moment, I am not happy. Yep. I need to figure out why I'm not happy. I know why I'm going through grieving. I don't know how long it will last. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I don't know what's to come from it. Like I said, I just don't know. Yeah. But during this time, 
leave me the fuck alone. Yeah, yeah. And people understood. Yeah, it's important. <laughs> yeah, people understood. It's just for your own sanity reasons, just emotions and everything else. I have to be able to, I don't need anybody else to pick me up if I can't pick myself up. Yeah. yeah. So that's really what was important to me. And you're going to have those bad days. And I don't think we talk about them enough. Yeah. And I know I don't. You know, people like Karen, you know you should tell this people. I said, what, in an Instagram post? Yeah, yeah. It's like hard. on in in a quick tweet. Yep. I said, this is more than just a tweet or just an Instagram post. This is how I'm feeling. I had to make the decision for myself yeah. to be better. And that's what I did. That's what my twenty nineteen is going to be about. It's to emotionally and spiritually be better. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's important. It is definitely something that that people don't talk about enough and never shows it's hard, and I get it. It's hard to show it on social media, and and it mm -hmm. never. Social media isn't even. Social media is just kind of this like mashup of of all the greatest things. Yeah, you know? and it's, it's like it's to, it's like your highlight reel. You go, yeah. you post, you get off. Yeah, and it's hard. And you just keep it moving, and yeah. that's what social media is to me. And I do want to take a better stand of having these conversations. That's why I really wanted to have this conversation. Yeah, because it's intimate, it's honest, yeah. and people can be like, oh. You can actually go here and listen to what I have to say mm -hmm. outside of just this quick little paragraph you're going to read in this picture yep. and go about your way. You For can sure. sit with this. Yeah, that's why I love that stuff like podcasts are catching on because it is long. You know, it's just it's it gives you more time to have these conversations. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and yeah. you just feel like you really know someone. That's what my listeners have really gravitated to the show because they feel like they're truly getting to know someone new that's interesting yeah. every week and it's cool that there's a, an outlet for that you know and yeah and you being it's it's just like it's really honest yeah. you're having honest conversation that you might not like i didn't tell anyone that story yeah so it's like me seeing i'm like oh my god i remember coming to la seeing you guys first yeah. like that was my first introduction to la so it's like those type of moments yeah when am i gonna have another platform or like that's bigger than an Instagram or a tweet. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. What, of course I have to ask you the mm -hmm. like sort of advice question, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, social media is the biggest thing in the world. We've mm -hmm. seen artists blow up off social media. We've seen people like Takashi 6 9 kind of use social media to become mm. the biggest star in the world, Troll. but then instantly Troll. backlash. Yeah. He definitely um, was, that was 15 seconds of like, oh my God. Right, it was and like then just fame. disaster. But like, so I guess what mm -hmm. I'm saying is, the what's happening now is, I think everyone is saying, okay, well, we got to use social media. Now it's getting into like stunts and trolling and stuff like that. But how long does, the thing is with that, how long does that last? Well, it doesn't. But, yeah. But that's my question to yeah. you, right? Is if, let's just say you had an artist today who's the most talented person you've ever seen since mm -hmm. you first saw J. Cole, right? Mm -hmm. And you can have him do anything with the way that he treats media. Mm -hmm. How would you tell him or her to approach media? Like, is it a lot of content, but don't go too far into this stuff? Is it like, what's perfect? What's the perfect scenario for you? Um, I like when people still keep that mystique to them, yeah. especially artists. Because we still have to keep that fine line of like, you remember back in the days it was, uh, you write your favorite artist, they went to their fan club. Yep. They didn't necessarily see it. Yep. Like it went to maybe an assistant, a manager, mm -hmm. the record label, whatever. It just, it, it, it had those boundaries and those people in between. And now I look at people like J-Rock, mm -hmm. Kendrick, like they use social media great. They yeah. do their updates and keep it moving. Yeah. Like when it's time to, they're not on there, like trying to be people's best friend, trying to fit in, trying to be a part of Black Twitter, yep. or they're not trying to be more than, more than who they think people people should see them as. Yep. And I like that. Yep. You know, it it keeps that mystique to you. And the same thing with like, I love Pusha T social. Mm -hmm. You know, he's another one. It's just you'll see everywhere he's performing. He ain't got nothing else for you. Yeah. He's like, you gonna see my performances. You may see the car I bought for the snow. Yeah. And other than that, it's not, hey, I'm in the house cooking yeah, or yeah, yeah. going live. And But it's whatever you're comfortable with. Yeah. With certain people I do follow, I love that they showcase their home. Mm -hmm. You know, they showcase their family because it makes them seem more relatable. Yeah. It, it honestly depends on who you want your audience to be. Yeah. But for an artist, I definitely tell them to keep, keep a bit of that mystique. Yeah. 
you know, show show your fans, you know, your playful side and certain things, but keep that mystique there. You don't need to always be there, always in the comments, liking this, liking that, arguing. And and it's just like, if you're on social media all day, what else are you not doing? Yeah. yeah. It's just crazy. It seems like a lot of these new artists are like social media influencers first and and they make um, music unfortunately that's Crazy. how they start off first yeah. now you don't even now you don't need a record label you just need you need a soundcloud and academics to post you yeah and and you get a what, a no jumper interview yeah and you're out of here yeah like it's it's a whole new and i'm not mad at it though like it's no disrespect towards them or anything like that no, but that's just doing a great job yeah they're doing an incredible job but that's just that's the space that we're in now yep. Where it's like that's what matters. So them, a lot of these people, I haven't even a lot of the, out, the talent out now. I don't know who they are. I just go to Instagram to find out. Yeah, yeah. Like my friend was putting me onto this new artist the other day and was like, "Do you know so and so?" I said, "Who?" Not to be confused with. I don't even want to say the other artist's name. <laughs> yeah. It was like, "No, no, no. His is duh. The other one is duh." I oh, said, no. "Okay, T H E and D A." Got it. I'll notice the difference. But then I just went to his Instagram to just get familiar with him and see who he is. So sometimes it introduces you to a whole new audience yeah. too. So make sure you understand the content that you're putting out there. Yeah, agreed. And then here's the other one that I just mm -hmm. have to ask you is obviously you deal with brands and I'm and I'm I'm just guessing that a lot of brands probably come to you and say, Hey Karen, we have a budget, we wanna be in this world, but we have no idea how to approach it, right? Mm -hmm. Um rap is the biggest thing in the world. Mm -hmm. Rap culture, rap dress is the biggest thing in the world. It's mm -hmm. leading fashion, it's leading literally everything. Um, but then you still have things happening like this Gucci thing. Mm -hmm. And that's just something I have to ask your take on because I've been mm -hmm. asked about it a lot lately. And and my response is, they I can't believe anyone would be so stupid and they messed up horribly yeah. and you know it, it's just very ignorant. But what, how do you feel about brands making such big mistakes and this being is, so short-sighted? This is what bothers me about, it's a lot of things with that situation that's just, that didn't sit well with me. Mm -hmm. I forget the designer's name. So it was this African-American designer. Dapper Dan? No, 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 before Dapper Dan, who was well-known. Uh -oh. And he created this whole, I wish I remembered his name because I really want to salute him. Mm -hmm. He His design was the black face with the red lip. That was his design. Yeah. And he created the design um, for women of all sizes and different things like that. Mm -hmm. Like to the point Naomi Campbell used to wear, used to strut his stuff down the runway. I forget what he died of from in the 90s, in was the he early a black 90s. Guy or no? Yeah, he was, he was a black gentleman. Yeah. So a lot of these fashion houses mm -hmm. are copying his old designs. Yeah. That's what I have a problem with. Mm -hmm. The same way Gucci went out and copy Dapper Dan mm -hmm. and because of black Twitter we're like hold up wait a minute black Twitter's the reason like no 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 you're not about to just take this whole man's thing and go down the runway yeah. and XYZ and because of because of our voice they realize oh shit we're not going to get away with this yeah. so let's partner with him and let's do certain things yeah. but I just felt more insulted that here they are stealing from another black man's yeah. another, I didn't even realize that part of the story that and then it's like at the same time, too, when people are like, we're boycotting for, for, for 90 days. I'm like, okay, what exactly is happening in 90 days? Why are we only boycotting for 90 days? Do we not buy new product in 90 days? Do we not wear the product that we own? Because I have a lot of socks. Mm -hmm. So I'm figuring out, am I going sockless for a while? Like, <laughs> yeah. what exactly? Like, it, there was no, you know, we had an authority mm -hmm. figure mm -hmm. that would be like, okay, this is how we're moving. This is what it is. It, it was no direct line of communication on this band. It was the most random band. And then it was just so many different things. But in this day and age, I don't understand how companies are still making this mistake. Yeah, that's my How, mind. like, how are you still making this mistake? Montclair with their coat, Burberry with the disrespectful, they had the brown sweater with yeah. the noose around the neck. I was like, why is this? And they tried to say it was towards, um, um, towards, um, suicide or something i said like an o like trying to pay respect what are you i i don't know and i was like what are you talking about who who just has a rope and is committing suicide yeah. with this type of rope yeah i was like this is not funny and the people who are doing that 
are young children who are getting picked on yep. and people who can't handle the prison system and who kill themselves. So regardless of who you're doing this old to, yep. it's disrespectful yep. because those are the two large majority of people who die from 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 suicide by hangings. Mm -hmm. It's because they're doing it to themselves. So if you're if this money is not going towards prevention, to me, you should have created something different. I don't need a reminder with a fucking noose because that's all that's taking me back is to 1930s 1940s when you were lynching black men you were yeah. lynching black people um but it's it's definitely unfortunate i would think with the day and age and the space that we're in now that they would know better yeah that's what's crazy to me like you should know better yeah. like you that's no like you know that you're one all you have to do is catch the attention of a group on social media and it will destroy like i just don't understand how you can be so careless but it lets me know how far down the line dapper dan dapper dan was to gucci mm -hmm. like the fact that they didn't you didn't even just a text yeah like yo what you think yeah, yeah let me yeah. get your idea yeah just like just just get an idea yeah. a consensus from just you probably have three black people you know yeah like you know what Tell me what you think about this. You have to have the home girl or homeboy be like, nah, that's not it. That's uh, not it. Apparently in Gucci they don't. They ha it's just like, to me, that's crazy. I'm like, I, I want to go through their directory. There has to be somebody on there who should have known a bit better. And then for Dapper, Don, Dapper Dan to be your savior yeah. and have to come in and fix it and everything else, which is great. I'm glad he took the step to like, listen, I'm not about to just like, oh, ban them. No. Yeah. I'm going to make them have a real conversation to realize the error in their ways and how we're going to fix this moving forward. That was the responsible answer that yeah. I was really looking for because it's bigger than, oh, we're just not going to wear them. Mm -hmm. It's like, how can we fix this moving forward? Yeah. And that's what, what, what Dapper Dan did. But hopefully a lot of these fashion houses, I mean, LVMH don't really have that problem. Yeah. Um, Versace doesn't have that problem. So hopefully Burberry, Montclair, and, and Gucci catch up. Yeah. Cause this is the second time with them. Yeah. It ain't no, it, there's no third time in my book. No, yeah, it's just mind blowing to me. I think at the at the basis of it, it's obviously should have never happened in the first place. But I just think in this time when social media, you can't get away with anything, right? So yeah. like, if you're you can't be so careless. Even if you somehow could spin the story to me that you didn't know what you were doing and blah blah blah, it's like you just can't afford to be so careless. So if you're marketing to a certain group or such a that's why I was telling somebody said to me the other day well maybe they don't care about the urban market maybe they don't care about what, and I'm like you can't not anymore right like when they have to exactly yeah they're the ones running when Virgil is designing Louis Vuitton's whole men, men's collection there's a reason for that right it's yeah. because the rap fashion and culture and urban culture is running yeah. high fashion running it's running everything yeah which is incredible but I don't know. It was just a, a bummer to me. But as someone who works so closely with brands trying to get into the culture and trying mm -hmm. to figure out how to make the right decisions, how it like. I live by this early on. Don't post it if you have to question it. Mm -hmm. If it's like, uh, do you think I'll get in trouble? Uh, do you think people will get mad? If you find yourself asking this question, yeah. don't post it. Yeah. That's what it boils down to. When they saw that, I get it. I get cold too and I do this a lot, but I don't need... I don't need it on my black sweater with red lips. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. you had to, yeah. Like, I'm like somebody had to say something. And from from the design house, no, from the sketch to the design house yeah. to the runway, not one person said anything. Mm -hmm. That's a long time. Yeah, it's a long. And I think it was up on their site for a while too. Yeah, and I was just like, we we totally missed this. Yeah. Heading over to socks and jackets, and then <laughs> yeah. we missed turtlenecks. Because yeah. that true. was terrible. It's true. Um, okay, let me ask you this. Where do you, like I said, mm -hmm. I've known you for eight or nine years now. Mm -hmm. You have progressed an insane amount. You yes. have came out of your shell. You, like I said, you look like a superstar. You act like one. You run multiple businesses. You're doing all of this stuff mm -hmm. from having your own website mm -hmm. where where are you in 10 more years what's the what's the, oh. what's, the what's the goal what's the are you i was supposed to be at the white house right now but the way that's set up we didn't win 
<laughs> so, <laughs> was that was, was, you were gonna have a job there? Yeah, with Hillary. If Hillary would have won, I was out of here. That's amazing. I couldn't wait. I love L.A., but the way my life was gonna be set up yep. in oh yeah in Potomac or in D.C., mm-hmm. I was like, I'm gonna get me. I'm gonna either adopt Sonny or Bo, one of their <laughs> dogs. I'm gonna get me a nice husband. Who works for you know Interpol or something? Yeah. It's gonna be great. I had my life mapped out. Oh, that's amazing. And then we lost yep. on my birthday, and Jeez. yeah, I I'm still trying to reel it in and figure it out. You know, people are like 2020 is coming, Karen. I'm like, I feel like I have PTSD all mm-hmm. over again. I was like, my nerves are bad. Yep. I don't know, but that's where I was supposed to be. Got it. But I still want to, you know, I want my live civil philanthropy side my foundation stuff to grow so we already have the one school in haiti we have a school computer lab and playground and then we have live civil day in elizabeth and then we have it in brooklyn as well so i want to bring that over to the west coast and do something here because i've been here for almost 10 years and i have nothing no foundation here set up so i'd like to set up something here um just philanthropy wise, put out another book, still just continue to be Karen. Yeah. You know, television, whatever, whatever blessings come my way, I will be collecting them. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you're, on the, you're doing something very yeah. right. Um, and then here's the last question. If mm-hmm. you could travel back in time to Karen, let's say Karen that just moved to New Jersey, she is not happy. She mm-hmm. just left all of her friends and the Girl Scouts. Mm-hmm. And you could just tell yourself anything now, this far in the journey, learning everything you've learned. What would you tell yourself? Your life is about to be great. Mm-hmm. Calm the fuck down. Because mm-hmm. I was just an emotional little twat. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was spoiled and annoying. Yep. So if I could just go back to those moments like Karen, deactivate that hissy fit like just turn it off like turn all of this whining off (laughs) because i did so much of it and it was just so unnecessary i can go back and just like karen just wait it out baby girl yeah it gets better and you hear that when people like oh no it's gonna get but real really telling myself like karen it gets better life is so much more enjoyable Mm -hmm. yeah there it is karen we did it thank you so much for sharing the story and for giving me those honest moments and i'm really glad we finally pulled this off yes i'm excited we did it bye bye guys thank you for listening thank you so much bye bye guys if you like that and you want to see more like it as well as vlogs other web series and all the random stuff that i'm doing here on youtube don't forget to click that subscribe button you won't regret it i promise